Hey everyone, thanks again for joining our uh, latest Q&A with the Theta Ecosystem Project. One of my favorites is uh, up today, MetaPass. Uh, and uh, thanks everyone for coming back a second time. You saw we had some technical difficulties last time. That was uh, unfortunately on my end, but uh, we'll streamline this time and have a, a great talk ready for the Theta community. So uh, Peter, Kevin, Richard, welcome again, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wes, pleasure to be here. Yeah. So um, a lot of Theta community, uh, Theta community are already really familiar with you guys and excited about what you're building. But for those that are brand new to MetaPass, uh, could you start off by telling us uh, what is MetaPass? What is it you're building? Yeah, so MetaPass is the next generation of event management. Um, we got this idea because the ticketing ecosystem is about $47 billion globally. Um, we've seen massive growth year over year in the digital communities, esports, physical events, um, and basically press conferences and things along those lines. But the solutions today in the 2.0 uh, era is a bit of fraught with problems. We've got fraudulent sales and uncaptured resales of the market and predatory secondary markets. Um, so we set out to fuel to f add fuel to this fire, uh, due to our own uh, issues with the current solution, with getting uh, ripped off with our tickets and things along those lines. So um, Richard, Kevin, and I set forth to do this, and one of the things that we found along the way was that we can solve this by using uh, the blockchain ledger and then adding uh, a lot of different uh, additional functionalities on top of this. It's kind of entertaining that when we first saw it out on this, we thought that we were all alone. But when we look back on it, Mark, John Oliver back in March uh, had a whole segment that talked about the ticketing industry at large. And he called uh, called Live Nation out and a bunch of the other uh, players inside of the space for some of their uh, practices of uh, basically charging extraordinary fees on top of tickets. Uh, to take one example, there was a Monster GM rally and the ticket price was $15 and the, the fees were $15 and two cents. It was more than the actual ticket. And this makes absolutely no sense. So for most, the $30 ticket isn't the end of the world, but if you're trying to buy a ticket for the entire family to go see an event, that's you can't go anymore. Right. And now these are getting resold for much higher values. So what we have today is uh, a, a beta that has been launched. It's ready to be used. We're um, the one stop shop for initial ticket sales, a resale market, royalty generation and event management all powered on top of your ecosystem of Theta. Yeah, th this one's definitely personal for me because I at least prior to, to COVID and all that, I used to love going to concerts and I paid a lot in fees and I've dealt with a lot of uh scalpers charging double or triple what the event originally cost and it felt like something that someone should have a solution to and for 10 20 years now no one's been able to break this live nation monopoly for the most part in the u.s so i'd be really excited uh of a meta pass being able to break into that uh and, and also because it's a really interesting use case for nfts beyond what people think of as just uh art and profile pics so can you tell us a little about exactly how it works and how you use NFTs to solve this? Right. So um, basically, the way we achieve this is every single ticket that is minted on Metabus is basically also a NFT at its heart. But instead of just having um, an image attached to it, we also have additional metadata and functions for you to kind of verify it using uh, our web app. Um, but all of this is kind of secured um, using the blockchain and, and, and using your signature of your wallet. Um, and essentially people can, people who are event organizers can kind of create their own smart contracts, which um, allows them to kind of issue NFTs for people to mint as tickets. And then after that, they can um, then scan the NFT tickets, which on our web uh, platform can generate like a QR code for you to scan uh, and also like market as uh, a stamp ticket. So people can't uh, use the same ticket to get into events twice. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the gist of how, how it works. Yeah, it solves, uh, certainly on my end, a consumer like me, it solves the problem of how do you uh, trade these tickets or, or buy it from someone else with having to show up halfway across town with cash or trust that they're going to send first. But in what you just mentioned, it made me think how this is great for uh, 
on the other side, the, the vendors and people making the shows too, because I'm sure ticket fraud is a huge uh, pain point for them. Yeah, exactly, because um, all of the tickets are essentially smart contracts, in, right? and you can't really uh, fake a smart contract because the address is, 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 is the same. So it's kind of it makes it much harder for people to kind of either use the same ticket twice or um, print a fake ticket or try to get in some other way. It, it makes the whole process a lot more streamlined. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it so also um, allows us to sorry Wes. It also allows us to to monitor what's the secondary markets that's going on, right? So if a ticket gets resold, we can have something baked into the royalty baked into the smart contract such that there's a kickback for the event organizers for every sale and resale that happens. Um, additionally, uh, yeah, so that's one of the one of the big tickets and also allows the the um, the event organizers, if they'd like to set a max uh, that the ticket could be sold, they could set ceilings. I mean, it really gives them the ability to have full control over their ecosystem um, through using us. Yeah, it's interesting because right now you have the event organizers and the people in the secondary market or, you know, scalpers is depending on what level they operate, you may use a different euphemism for them. But right now they're they're opposed to each other. But if they get a percentage, uh, if the organizer gets a percentage of each sale that happens, it's actually more of a mutually beneficial relationship. It's not that different from uh, an NFT drop that happens and then there's a secondary market that trades it. Uh, and the creators are happy about this because everyone benefits from it and they get a piece of everything. Which, uh, uh, yeah, it's a great concept. We can get uh, deeper into it, but just to back up for a little bit, um, wh what's the background for each of you guys? How did you uh, come up with the idea of, of MetaPass uh, and, and uh, what got you into crypto to, to let you see this opportunity? Richard, why don't we start with you since you were... Uh, uh, really the beginning of MetaPass or even the predecessor to MetaPass. Yeah, so yeah, so I am the creator of uh, Tickets, which is um, the what MetaPass um, originally was, I guess, like the platform at least. Um, it was just submitted in the, um, the, the, the data hackathon, I think a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and originally I was involved in kind of um, just normal DeFi, um, in the DeFi space and, and on Ethereum. And I was quite interested in, in blockchains in general. Um, and I thought that um, the Data Hackathon was a great opportunity for me to kind of build something of my own. Um, I'm currently um, doing a master's in, in Imperial. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm also working on, on, on a project for my master's, which is related to the blockchain, kind of on gas estimation of, um, of Solidity smart contracts. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of more or less involved in this space for, for, for a bit. Uh, and the reason why I created Tickets was because I've, I wanted to create something with NFTs uh, to kind of unleash its potential more than just uh, simple JPEGs and, and art, right? I thought I wanted to do something that's, you know, not been done before or, or not been done as much before because we have a ton of NFT marketplaces out there that are just like selling uh, NFTs that have like little utility to them. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. the NFTs could have way more, could achieve way more stuff than what it currently is. So that's why I created Ticket. And then I met Peter and then we kind of um, combined our efforts together to kind of, you know, build this platform out even further in the future. I can go next. Um, so my name's Kev. I do sort of product and marketing for MetaPass. Um, I got into crypto not very long ago. I think I may be the newest person on the team into crypto. Most of my career has been working in games and tech and then esports. So I've been kind of all over the sort of technical product side of things. Uh, but still with an interest in live events and an interest in, um, you know, just generally just helping people. And then when Peter came along and said, hey, you know, there's an opportunity for us to take down Ticketmaster. I said, well, okay, yeah, we got to do that. <laughs> What's it going to take? What do you need from me? So we got breakfast at a, a little diner down the street and he kind of walked me through the vision. He went back and forth a little bit. I tried to chisel away at it, see if it really could stand up and 
uh, you know, he had a lot of great things to say. We knew that there was going to be a, you know, a challenge ahead of us to get there. The first challenge we had was we need to build a platform. And then we met Richard, who had already built a platform, who, you know, was in a place where he could really benefit from a couple of people, you know, who could bring a bit of the business side, a little bit of the marketing side, a little bit of the product side, you know, help put together sort of a roadmap for fundraising and, uh, you know, how we would appropriate those funds to actually build out Richard's vision into something even grander, even better. Um, and, you know, we're, we're still living that journey right now. So this is all pretty exciting for me. Yeah, absolutely. So like Kev mentioned, we I had this idea to come and do something along these lines. And uh, through our research, my my history inside of crypto is I missed the train for Bitcoin back in 2009. We were going to go out to set up a, a mining operation. My buddies and I at the time were like, no, it doesn't make sense because of power consumption. This thing's never going to be over this price. So it's just going to be a waste of money. And you guys all know the history of this. So uh, we're still kicking ourselves. And, but so I've been watching it, I've been going through it, trying to figure out the right way. And this has been something that's been sitting in the back of my head for a while. And like you mentioned, like we're joining forces here to, to try to, to bring this to market for everybody to consume. Um, and it's been a ton of fun. Excellent. Yeah, I love that uh, your, your founding team has a, a great mix of the, the skills to bring this to market. So I'm uh, really excited to see how you guys gel together on that. Um, so uh, already uh, MetaPass is being used uh, and the platform being used already for some events and, and including some upcoming ones that have been announced too. Can you guys talk a little bit about um, specific examples where MetaPass is being used for ticketing? Yeah, probably the, the easiest example for us is kind of like our marquee event for the year is ThetaCon 22, you know, this is coming in December. I imagine a lot of your communities already heard of this. Yeah. Um, we've got, uh, you know, a, a Discord with the creators of, the, of ThetaCon and these guys have been talking every single day. Um, a whole bunch of them are coordinating to make sure that this is an event that the community is gonna remember. Um, but if you, are, if you are interested in the Theta community, if you're already plugged into the Theta community, um, this is pretty much the event of the year, and you know we're super grateful, you know, low key honored um, to actually be powering this. Um, you know we're also working on NFT South. I want to give Richard credit for that one for organizing um, MetaPass's role in that. But um, really, I want to to emphasize ThetaCon because we are the exclusive ticketing platform that's powering ThetaCon this year. Um, and I do believe tickets are going on sale pretty soon. So, you know, make sure you're following their Twitter handle. I think it's at ThetaCon22. Yeah, it's going to be a real exciting one. Uh, and and they, uh, they're they already acting as great connectors for projects throughout the space. So, you know, perfect uh, situation for you guys to jump into. And I, and I hope it'll be, uh, at least some of you guys can attend in person as well, since uh, it'd be great for you guys to be featured and talk about what went into the building the ticketing for for the, the event itself and then and where you're going from there. So uh, if not already on the roster, then uh, I'll, I'll talk to them about it. You guys definitely should be. Uh, so um, what else is in the roadmap coming up for MetaPass? I know uh, obviously tickets is the core uh, of what you do, but you've alluded a few times to fan engagement and some other things that you're building out. So I, I can tell there's a, there's a bigger vision that you're building to after after tickets. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I'm happy to take this one. Um, right now, MetaPass is a great ticketing solution if you're already in the Theta ecosystem. Um, but if you're looking, if you're an average person, you know, if you're my grandma and you're looking to buy tickets to an event, um, you probably don't have T-Fuel. You probably don't have a MetaMask account. Oh, in fact, a lot of people out there don't have these things yet, whether they just haven't understood the, you know, the benefits of working on chain, if they just are maybe a little technically slow or technologically slow, I should say. Um, these people would really benefit from something better than Ticketmaster or better than Eventbrite, which we know our operating model is, but right now we lack these sort of, you know, everyday use, pay with your credit card. You don't need a blockchain, you know, digital wallet or anything, any understanding of blockchain. You don't need any of that and you can use Eventbrite. So number one on our roadmap right now is coming up with those on-ramps and those off-ramps so that people can pay with the currencies that they already use. 
And then on top of that, not needing to have a digital wallet to log in um, and just knowing that even though this is all still powered by Theta and it's all still run by T Fuel and it's still using, you know, whether it's a MetaMask wallet or any other kind of wallet that we, you know, need to support under the hood. Um, for the average user out there who maybe doesn't understand blockchains or thinks they're scary or, you know, has heard about one too many NFT scams and now thinks it's all just too spooky to get into. Um, we want MetaPass to be something that they don't have to worry about. They can use it the same way that they've always used their favorite ticketing platforms. We're going to have total experience parity there. Um, while still at the same time being powered by the blockchain, being powered by Theta. And, you know, something that, you know, I was interested in uh, bringing up as well, Wes, was, you know, kind of an opportunity here where MetaPass could not just serve as sort of a tentpole uh, program within the Theta community, but also serving as a bit of an onboarding device for the Theta community. Um, so not just being able to have all these people using our platform, but using our platform as a way of kind of introducing those people to the Theta ecosystem and all the things that Theta can do if they have a good time on MetaPass. Now, it's a very good point. We talk a lot about how, um, you know, it, whether it's with our partners or, or just in general, how we don't think that the way to be mass adoption is to make everyone have to get a crypto wallet, or at least not, that's, that's not the first step of it. To your point, no one, uh, no one's grandma, really no one's uh, outside of our, our still somewhat small crypto community understands or wants to you know how to use MetaMask. And if that's where you're starting out, that you have to do that uh, to use your product, you'll never be taking on the uh, Ticketmaster with their you know, expensive, but at least somewhat streamlined user experience. Um, we should to connect on offline about that. We know from experience that data drop that it can be painful dealing with these payment processors, but a necessary step if you want to bring on the credit card users and non-crypto non folks, which of course we have to. Um, so we should connect on whether they're a good fit or at least, uh, if not them, some others to onboard you guys with, because you're totally right. That's a, a necessary step to it. And yeah, it, if you bring on a, a lot of those users and can get them to dip a, a toe in the pool of crypto and, and learning about theta, that's even better for all of us. Yeah. Um, and so uh, on, on the fan engagement uh, on that side, do you guys see it as uh, going to, like say uh, originally you're selling concert tickets for, for this artist or this label's artist, do you see MetaPass moving up the chain to where they use it as a platform for other things like say, you know, a fan club or, or you know, maybe if they release an album, royalties, other things, is that the idea that eventually it'll sort of bring into these other entertainment functions for these creators? Yes, um, this is sort of long-term roadmap. We haven't made any official announcements on this yet. So I'll go as far as to say there's a lot of excitement on the MetaPass team for leveraging subnets and other sort of, you know, coming down the pipe, Theta ecosystem benefits um, to make sure that fandoms out there can engage with their favorite brands and artists mm -hmm. in a way they have never been able to before with a responsiveness they have never been able to before. Um, this is going to change the way event management works, and this is going to change the way you experience live events. Very exciting. All right, I, I, I'll take that, and I won't pry too much and force you to, to open up on the roadmap before we're actually there, but um, I, I definitely like that angle you're taking, uh, and, and if I caught your illusion, I, I agree that it's a perfect uh, use case to use one of the, the Theta meta chain coming up, uh, one of the sub chains to both because you presumably would have a heavy transaction volume for this kind of thing, but it also means you can offer that um, functionality to artists or, or a label that wants to have their own branded uh, subchain. You could almost be uh, where MetaPass is like the the uh, one who white labels that or offers the, the the product from that under the hood is actually offering the new meta chain, and you're the you kind of the relationship manager on that. So um, 
kind of already answered with Datacon and some of the other things you're working on for these creators. Uh, but where do you see MetaPass creating value for the data community, or where do you see your role in that? Um, so Richard and I can field this a little bit. Um, I already mentioned briefly that one of my goals for uh, MetaPass, just as a kind of you know giving back to the data community, is finding opportunities to work with. Um, Theta Labs to serve as a bit of an onboarding tool for the Theta community. So mm -hmm. again, if you use MetaPass, you're having a great time with it. There's an opportunity for us to pull back the curtain a little bit and say, hey, look what's powering us. Uh, you know, look at this technology that makes this experience so seamless for you that gives you the sort of visibility and transparency into a system that Ticketmaster has kept very obscure intentionally for a very long time. Well, guess what? There's a lot of other amazing programs out there. There's a lot of other amazing products and services out there powered by the same technology that give you the same transparency and visibility and sort of truth as to how these organizations are operating that really just came about because of ecosystems like Theta. Um, that's kind of what we're trying to contribute here is not just you know, uh, fixing the ticketing problem, but showing other people like, hey, if you thought we did a good job, take a look at some of these other folks, right? Yeah, yeah I can totally see that where uh, it, it, it harkens a little bit back to, you know, what we talked about uh, with data as an ecosystem being uh, a, a set of tools, uh, decentralized tools in the media and entertainment space. So it all works together in that different entertainment companies or creators may want to use Theta Video API to, to tap into our edge network to distribute their video. Uh, then they may issue NFTs as collectibles to their fans. Um, and I, I feel like this does it perfectly into that, where um, MetaPass is another hook where they may use it to organize events. And then as soon as they're using that and have some familiarity with data, you know, and then when they're doing a live stream or a live event or something where they want to uh, to host that on on uh, on Theta Video API, it, it's each of these acts like sort of a funnel to bring in new users. And then you know I, I think of it as like a product suite. You guys have had some experience in uh, enterprise tech companies, so you probably understand. It. Like you know you get them hooked on one product, and then you expand into it, and pretty soon you get them using the whole suite of products. Totally. So um, you guys have made a lot of progress already in building out with data, but what are the things you think needs to be built out either in the data ecosystem, either in a technical sense, community-wise? Uh, what are the other tools that you think uh, could be built either by Theta Labs or, or by other community projects that would help manifest be more of a success? You mentioned payment processors, that's obviously one, um, but what else can, can be done to help uh, make make your vision a reality for metapads yeah so so i can answer this um so first of all i think um one of the big things that are coming from data tv is the ability to use nfts to gate um your videos um mm -hmm. i think right now it's not available for live streams yet but uh, i'm quite excited about the fact that you can uh, use nfts to kind of gate uh live streams on data tv um, I think that could be a, a very cool use case for MetaPass because since all of our tickets are, are technically uh, NFTs, you can basically use them natively on Data TV for, for example, pay-per-view um, streams or mm -hmm. uh, even like a subscriber pass um, that um, content creators can issue, like for example, a monthly pass or something like that. Um, and, and that would be a, a really cool use case. Um, mm -hmm. And I think another thing that uh, I, f I feel like data could improve on, or at least the ecosystem wise, would be to incentivize more premium content creators to, to join the ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. And these people would basically kind of get more value from both data TV and, um, and MetaPass, right? And, and I think when the live stream feature um, for, for gating with NFTs comes out, this might make it a better value proposition for them. Um, they can kind of yeah. use MetaPass to make more money. Um, uh, 
yeah, but yeah. Um, at the bottom mm-hmm. line, if someone uh, wants to use MetaPass and Theta TV to kind of host uh, virtual events, MetaPass would be there to kind of support them and, and will be the infrastructure that to kind of power this experience. Um, yeah, I think it's great mission that because, um, yeah, it, it could, one of the, the pain points uh, is likely that, uh, especially a premium content creator, they're going to be very focused on how they monetize their content. So not giving them the right tools to do that. They might think, uh, and we've heard from creators before, that uh, super interesting idea, but if I don't have the way to, to monetize my big user base over here, I may think it's neat, but I'm never going to shift my entire streaming infrastructure over here. If they can use MetaPass to gate that, uh, and, and it's actually a way that's more popular with their users, and they can bring it to their user base and say, we've got a more fair way for you to access my streams. That's a big positive, I think, in their mind. Uh, and, and as far as the live stream part of it, uh, I, I know Jay has been testing it just this last week. I, I think we're looking at one to two week range for release, but uh, I'll let you guys know. But hopefully very soon we'll start to see uh, uh, how you guys can develop that out for live streams. For sure. And to piggyback and kind of plus one to what Richard was saying there, um, there's a, I, I see a huge opportunity here where if we're supporting content creators who already have their own streaming tech, that's fine. They should be able to use us as well. That's you know a goal of ours to be certain. But as you know, Theta.tv continues to grow and grow and grow, and as those other streaming platforms just kind of sit and stagnate and just kind of fade into history, it's going to be pretty easy for us again as an onboarding tool to kind of introduce some of the tools and the technology of our ecosystem, not just to the you know the people who are buying these tickets and the attendees of these live events, but even some of the hosts are going to be able to start leveraging more of Theta's tech under the hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, Thanks. uh, yeah, I have, <laughs> I have another point actually. So, please, please. um, yeah, so I think another thing that data uh, ecosystem can kind of improve on as well would be um easier on ramps, right? I think we talked about it, but also um, a more kind of mature DeFi uh, ecosystem. I think that's the main thing that sets data apart from other layer one blockchains, right? Because I think a lot of people just think of data network as the streaming blockchain, but they don't actually know that mm-hmm. there is DeFi that exists on, 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 on data. And, and, and DeFi is quite important because that's where all the liquidity is, right? That's how people can bridge their tokens to, to data and then they can use USDC or whatever tokens they want on Ethereum on data. So uh, I think not, not particularly Lily, what data net, um, data labs could do, but like as a community, having a more um, mature DeFi scene would definitely help uh, the whole ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's true. We haven't made a focus of it, but um, yeah, Theta is completely EVM compatible. If there's anything DeFi you're running on Ethereum, for example, you can port over. And in fact, you know, Theta Swap uses some of the the source code behind Uniswap to begin with. Uh, VoltSwap has used uh, similar kind of ideas to use some cross-chain bridges already, but you know it, it still needs to to be at least some more focus so users understand that and actually start bringing liquidity over. So one way you could do that is is uh, for example in our in our coming hackathons to, to put more emphasis on a DeFi track, even though it's not at the core of what we're doing, but to, to be able to have more users build out these tools around the media entertainment thing. So like if there's MetaPass, um, maybe it's someone who wants to make a lending market for uh, ticketing events, especially if there's high-end ones, I could totally see that happening with, uh, you know, we dream a little bit, but like say Coachella passes, uh, there's enough money involved that you could see someone wanting to, to borrow it or to use it as collateral or something like that. So even if we're still focused on media and entertainment, there's definitely a place for DeFi. Right. Well, um, is, is there any final thoughts, anything we didn't cover that you guys want to share with the data community or if nothing else, um, where can they find out more about MetaPass? How can they get involved with you guys? Where should they head to to learn more? 
Awesome. So yeah, thank you so much, Wes. This has been fantastic. Uh, if you go to metapass.world, you'll check out our site. You can check out the beta on the top right. Um, also, we're at metapass underscore world uh, on Twitter. Um, so come check us out. And uh, we're really, really excited again for be hosting ThetaCon. So check them out as well at ThetaCon22. Uh, so yeah. Thank you again. This has been fantastic. And we're really, really excited to keep working with the community and Theta Labs uh, to go to the next generation. I agree. Uh, yeah, likewise from our end, I think you guys are one of the very exciting projects in the ecosystem and looking forward to you guys uh, uh, building more in the coming year. Then, uh, yeah, to our community, if you haven't already, uh, check out metapost.world. And in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure we'll be announced on, on both sides, but go get your ThetaCon ticket exclusively on Metapath. Thanks again, Peter, Richard, and Kev, uh, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Thank bud. you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.